Hello everyone, welcome back to my Code to Care video series. Uh, I'm again honored to have Dr. Peter Lee, uh, the head of Microsoft Research, joining me today. Um, I'm going to have him join me in this octagon just to mix it up a little bit. Okay, there we go. Hello Peter, welcome to the octagon. How are you? <laughs> Hi Don. It's, uh... Uh, it's always uh, going to be a mystery to me in what shape you're going to introduce me next. <laughs> Glad only, to be here in this octagon. <laughs> yes, I only know so many polygons, so uh, <laughs> so we're almost to the end of that uh, of that thread. But it's but it's great to have you uh, have you here. Uh, both of us and my audience here are enthusiasts of Gen AI, um, and I feel like um, I don't know if you if this is kind of a staircase. We've gone up one step. Uh, and that steps about perhaps Gen AI writing, writing things for us and, and doing that task. And I feel like the next step is, um, or at least one of the next steps, is around agentic AI, having Gen AI like do things beyond writing. I don't know, make decisions or call tools or that, uh, that kind of thing. And there's an enthusiasm that we have and some use cases we're fleshing out with our EMR and things like that around Agentic AI, but I wanted to he hear from you because you kind of have this broader view of of uh, research in Microsoft and multiple industries. W what's your view of agentic AI? Is this a is this a big next thing? Or is it just a buzzword? Like, where do you think we'll be uh, applying applying this? Yeah, you know, um, I, I I like the way that you frame this, uh, Don, because um, I, one way that we talk about this uh, within Microsoft um, uh, is you know, we're in the middle, we use a baseball analogy, we're yes. in the middle innings of sure. this uh, tech revolution. And I think you're right that a centerpiece of this middle innings era uh, is uh, agentic AI. Um, and, you know, when you break it down, um, you know, there are maybe three or four components uh, that really are relevant to agentic AI. You know, one is memory. Um, you know, uh, we in the early innings, you know, every time you came back to your LLM, you were starting from a blank slate. True. Um, but, yeah. you know, we're very rapidly and there's so much experimentation going on and being deployed, uh, getting into an era where uh, AI uh, has a, a, some form of episodic memory, you know, that remembers who you are and what the context of, of your life and uh, work uh, might be. Uh, second is uh, what we call entitlements. Uh, this is the idea of what permissions does the AI have? Uh, is it allowed to access uh, various tools? Is it allowed to send emails? Right. Uh, right. Is it allowed to write a SQL query and, you know, and retrieve stuff from a database um, and so on? That's entitlements. Um, and the third is, uh, as you sort of alluded to, uh, has to do with actions, mm -hmm. uh, being able to actually change the state of the world. Um, if you know, I, we think about that typically in robots. You know, where a robots able to apply force physically in the world, but even on your computer, is it allowed to move your mouse and click on something? Right, right. Um, is it allowed to write a file, uh, write an email, um, uh, uh, and so on? Um, and then the the last element of this, uh, which is sort of pervades all of these things, is reasoning. So these elements of memory, entitlements, um, uh, act, action, and reasoning um, uh, are all sort of being bound together by both scientists, computer scientists, mm -hmm. AI researchers, and by industry uh, around this idea of agentic AI. And we're only in the middle innings, so that doesn't mean that in the late innings, agentic AI will be a big thing. It could be, it's hard to predict. Uh, but for sure, there's going to be a tremendous push today to deploy uh, agent-based systems uh, out in the world. Um, and I think that you know maybe one way that some of your listeners might already be using it, uh, in beta test, in public beta test right now in Microsoft Teams, is a meeting facilitator agent. Sure, sure. And the meeting facilitator agent lives in the chat of the meeting. Uh, it knows the agenda, uh, helps keep the meeting on schedule, 
if uh, if it understands that someone might have something relevant to say but hasn't had a chance to speak, it might suggest uh, that you know the meeting participants uh, allow that, and it facilitates the agent. Well, uh, fac facilitates the meeting. Well, in a joint effort with uh, Stanford Medicine, uh, we recently uh, demonstrated an extension of that idea called a healthcare orchestrator agent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and the application at Stanford that they've been testing in real world setting uh, are tumor board meetings, mm, uh, which right. conveniently enough happen on Microsoft Teams. Yeah, um, The same things would work in Zoom and other you sure. know, platforms. But the idea is to have an AI agent that is a participant in the tumor board meeting uh, can be asked to do mundane things like retrieve uh, certain patient records, uh, invoke other AI models to do things like further analysis of uh, radiology or pathology, um, access and retrieve relevant uh, recent published research literature that might be pertinent to the gen genetics of this particular patient, uh, and so on. Um, and that idea of an agent that almost acts like a person sure. participating in a, in a working sure. to solve a problem, yep. in this case, uh, solve what is the best treatment for this cancer patient, I think is, 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 is exceptionally exciting. And if you think about it, it's exhibiting all of these things. It has to remember what this is about. Right. Uh, it has to be entitled and allowed to invoke all these other tools. Mm -hmm. Uh, it has to be able to act and make recordings uh, of uh, things, come up with notes and PowerPoint presentations for the results of, of these things for maybe for institutional review board or, or whatever. Um, and it has to uh, be intelligent and, um, and, and be able to have the chain of thought uh, to, uh, to, to come to a conclusion jointly with a set of human beings. That, that, uh, that tumor board is a great example actually. And, and for folks who don't know what a tumor board is, it's kind of this multidisciplinary meeting uh, of physicians across multiple specialties around a patient case and deciding what to do. And, and it's sort of um, the next, if you remember six months ago, people all had these note takers that would join our meetings and they would listen and then summarize the, the meeting, but essentially not do anything. It was like Gen AI version one, you know, would just write, but not yes. do anything. But this yes. is a great example of where you're in a tumor board. Hey, can you fetch this? Can you grab this article? Can you do this? Almost like you're talking to kind of a coordinator of the tumor board, but it can get stuff done. Uh, That's right. Yeah. And, you know, the other uh, example, um, you know, our colleagues here in Microsoft in our uh, Microsoft AI division under Mustafa Sullivan, uh, they recently uh, published a paper on a AI system called MAIDXO. And it's a multi-agent system. So there are multiple uh, AI systems. Uh, one uh, AI system uh, simply interacts with a patient to try to come to a, a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, there's another agent that um, is the contrarian. Okay. Yeah. Just disagrees with everything. And it's just constantly <laughs> challenging uh, the thought process of the primary uh, agent. There's another agent that's just worried about cost. Okay. You know, and yeah. is just constantly questioning if the primary agent wants to order another lab test. Right, right. Um, uh, and so on. And um, these things engage in what is uh, in the paper referred to as a chain of debate. Sure. Uh, in order to arrive uh, at a correct diagnosis. And uh, in a collaboration with the New England Journal of Medicine, testing on an unpublished uh, collection of extremely rare uh, diagnostic cases, uh, this system was able, with current technology, uh, to come to a correct diagnosis over 80% of the time, wow. uh, more than four times better than, than very seasoned human clinicians. Wow. So wow. these ideas of agentic computing aren't only to help facilitate uh, human processes, uh, but they can kind of reinforce uh, the intelligence of other AIs and on top of that uh, reduce things like hallucination rates uh, simply through challenging each other. Right, right. I talked about actually debating agents on this on this channel, but it was a math problem. There was a few math problems 
Uh, yes. And, you know, that they would debate until they agreed, uh, which... Yes. But they, that's interesting use case where each agent is kind of assigned a role um, and it really facilitates the, the benefits of groupthink, in a sense, yes. by having agents kind of join the join the party and take on roles and instead of asking one agent to consider everything. That That's really interesting. Well, and this leads to something that I felt very strongly and we wrote about in um, our book, which is... Uh, you know, I think many doctors and nurses would be well served to do their own work, but then think of an AI as an agent that can be a second set of eyes. Yeah, sure. Um, so if you're developing, say, a dif differential diagnosis, it's not bad to present the case and your proposed differential to an AI just to get a second set of eyes. And you know, just asking specifically, is is there anything I've overlooked? Sure, sure. Uh, are there any errors yeah. I'm making? Um, I, I think can be a very good. No, uh, I good I, I do love that use case. It's kind of the what else could this be? It sort of yeah. expands the mind of the decision maker. Even even levels of I don't know if hallucination is the right word, but even levels of being a little bit wrong don't harm this use case because you're just asking right. for my mind to be a little bit expanded. That sort of thing. Any anything else I should be considering, and I think that's a great, great uh, use case for that. Yeah, great. Well, it was a, a joy to have you on the show again, Peter. Um, I'll have you uh, have a great day, and uh, thanks again. Thank you, Don. It's a great honor to be here. Yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, until next time.